What's up guys? This is a video I was kind of on the fence about doing for a while. Uh, I didn't really think there was any value in it, but actually looking into the details, there's actually a lot of interesting things that aren't advertised or G doesn't tell you readily. Between the Z51 and 9 Z51 C8, I found a lot of this interesting, all the differences when you really get into it. Uh, a couple of these I was kind of like, wow, that's interesting. Let's roll that intro and get into it. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to touch on a few things about the Z51 versus 9, the tires, the brakes, uh, the suspension, the exhaust, the performance rear axle ratio, the ESD limited slip, the aero package, and the heavy duty cooling system between the two. And I think you're gonna find this very interesting. Let's go to the car. Oh, and real quick before I forget, I've been given the opportunity to promote an awesome cause for MS Research. If you know anyone with MS, it absolutely sucks. In any case, uh, I'm not much of a promotion sweepstakes, guys, but this is a nonprofit for a good cause and a chance for my viewers to win a literal brand new Z06 plus $20,000 for $25. Pretty amazing. I'll show you how to do it real quick. Simply click on the link down in the description under comments. It'll be pinned and it'll take you right here to this website. This is the car Z06 plus $20,000. By using my promo code, you get 30% more tickets. Simply to do it, click donate now to enter. Use my promo code right there. Click how many tickets you want. And this is how many more you get using my promo code, fill in your information and boom, you are done. You have until August 25th. I'll remind you guys in the future. Yeah, it's for your cause, it's vetted. This is a nonprofit. It's not a scam, I promise you. All I ask is that if one of my viewers does in fact win the Z06 is that I wanna review it. So I don't care where you are at some point, I'll link my way out there, I'll find you. I wanna review, I wanna meet you and or drive it here here on the East Coast, so that'd be a lot of fun. Thought I'd share that with you guys in case you wanna win a brand new Z06. All right, on to the video. All right, as you can see, my garage is still in a million pieces. It's actually better, I can film a lot more stuff with this off. Um, I got word from Holly today, they're wrapping up my fabrication for the new side right there, should be shipped out tomorrow. Hopefully I'll get it overnight, it's Saturday, but I'm a realist, I'll probably get it Monday. All right, we'll start with the tires. Uh, the, the least exciting to most exciting, if you will. So these are the all seasons. These come standard on the non. Um, if you get a Z51 car, they do come with the four S's. Now, the all seasons are better in cooler temps and obviously wet conditions. Under 60 degrees is going to be your, 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 your guys to go to. If you're in a warm climate, only drive your car in the summer. You track your car in warm days. The four S is the way to go. If you drive a car year round, you don't track it very often. If you drive in temperatures under 50 degrees like myself, the all seasons are just fine. I've driven both. Um, they feel almost the same, but on a track day, a warm day, the 4S is where I'll perform the all seasons. No question about it. All right, the brake setup. This is where it gets very interesting and it's not really well advertised the difference. Now, both the front and rear calipers are both four piston, but on the Z51, they are a little thicker and a little bigger. The rotors themselves are also wider, but they're also thicker as well. So if you ever want to interchange the rear electronic parking brake, you got to get one specific to the Z51. I just learned this watching the Goon Squad. Uh, they're swapping parts from a non to a Z51 and all the issues they're running into it. It's, it's kind of interesting, all the stuff that you can't interchange. Uh, furthermore, what I find very fascinating about the brakes on both the non and Z51 cars is that on both, the rear rotor is bigger. I'm not kidding. I'm in my garage a lot, you know, drinking beer, watching TV with the car. And it has been quite a few times like, man, this rear rotor looks bigger than the front. I know it's not, but you know what? It is crazy, right? Yeah, this guy in the back is 13.6 inches in diameter. Up front, it's 12.6. And on the Z51 car, it's 13.3 uh, up front and 13.7 out back. Let me show you the front real quick. It's hard to tell, but yes, these are a little bit smaller than the rears. I've never seen that before. Is that a thing? I have no idea, but yeah, you can see the, the caliber, although very beefy, it's a Brembo. And the Z51 car, they're a little wide, a little fatter and a little bigger, but these stop just fine. Just enough for me. But if I do decide to go brakes in the future, I'll probably just do Z51 conversion up front. Just a lot less to deal with and it, much, and it will be much quicker. I've seen some Z51 used uh, Edge Red on 
eBay for under a grand. I figured I could scoop some of those up and then sell those and wouldn't be too much of a financial burden to do and more content as well, you know what I mean? All right, next is suspension. After 50 years, the Corvette comes with actual coilovers and a spring, no longer a leaf spring that transverses both tires together. It kind of ties them together, you know what I mean? So no more crosstalk, you get a real coilover. The difference is though, on a non-Z car, it's a non-adjustable shock. It's much softer than the Z car. And in fact, it's actually too soft in my opinion. That's why I went with the upgraded uh, Paragon Springs. It offers a one inch drop all the way around. It's a much better stance in my opinion. But the non-Z car, how it comes from the factory, is incredibly soft. It's way too soft. And I might end up doing the Z51 sway bars in the future. I'll touch on those in a little bit. But yes, you do get an actual coilover. Now on the Z car, they're a little beefier, a little stiffer, about 20% more stiff and they are adjustable up to three quarters of an inch. So if you want a little bit more stance, um, you could do just those, you should be good to go. And you can add springs as well. You can get almost a two inch drop out of your uh, Z51 coils from the factory with the springs. Also the sway bar up front on both cars is identical and the rear sway bars are three millimeter sticker on the Z car in case you're curious. There they are right there. That guy right there going across. Yeah, I might do that in the future. We'll see. All right, next is the exhaust. Now, the exhaust is unique to where it's not just a Z51 item. You can get it on a non-Z51 car like I did. It adds five horsepower on either package. Um, the reason why I opted for the uh, performance exhaust knowing I was going to change my exhaust in the future is that I wanted to keep the NPP feature, meaning the dual mode, because I know once I get an aftermarket exhaust, it's going to be loud. It already is loud in stock form. So I want something I can kind of tone down when I'm driving around the neighborhood, and it gives me that option. It's these guys right here. It's the performance valves right there. There's the AFM. Those come on all cars, but you have to have the NPP to get the performance little valves right there. But yeah, that allows you to kind of quiet down the exhaust, either funnel it through a muffler or straight off the back. So that's the real difference between the two. In stock form, it's not bad. I just wanted a deeper tone. I really wanted to delete the AFM valves, which I'm doing, the simulators, because I hate that noise. And uh, yeah, I just want a deep growl, something a little more exotic, some, some more farts and burbles on um, ups and down shifts, which I'm looking forward to hearing that soon. One thing I found very interesting is that on the Z car, the axles, if you can see the damn things back there, right back in there, are much thicker on the Z51 car than they are the base car right here. These are not interchangeable. Again, I learned this on the Goon Squad video. I thought that was very interesting. But GM does this to give us a performance ratio, if you will. And that's what they call it. Performance rear axle ratio. All right, next big thing is the ESD, which is the electronically controlled limited slip differential. You can see it right in there. And this guy's cool because it works even when the uh, stability control system is fully disabled. Uh, the diff works to stabilize the rear end during quartering, but it's also calibrated to help the uh, Corvette step off smartly from standstills, if you will. Um, it minimizes wheel spin and would accelerating really hard or making really sharp turns. Long story short, it minimizes wheel hop and tire spinning. But I'm kind of glad I went with the mechanical diff. You can break the tires loose a little easier than the mechanical diff, and it's one less actuator or electronic thing to break in the future. And the, uh, the performance gain you get is so negligible. I'm definitely okay with the uh, mechanical diff. Uh, next is Arrow. If you would have a Spoiler right here, my bumper is on, but it's right here, this guy. I just put this on last week in conjunction with my exhaust. But this is the Z51 spoiler that comes with the package. There is a low wing as well you can get. Um, if you get a base car like I had, it's, it's nothing. It's just slick, nothing on it at all. Some people hate it, some people love it. I was indifferent, I just happened to like this and it, and it kind of fell into my lap, so I put it on. And then also you get a little, uh, Little plastic, I think it's a three piece spoiler that goes up front, which I'm gonna do something a little more aggressive. Not crazy, but a little more aggressive. But yeah, and it's usually one car, you get a little lip right there, which I don't have, because it's a base car. And lastly, another big one is cooling. The C51 has much better cooling, especially for hot track days. The upfront 
radiators on both sides are beefier and bigger. And then there's an additional radiator about right here that cools your DCT, uh, which the base car does not have. It has an extra radiator and fan on this side only. Now, both cars, regardless, you get a heat exchanger inside the transmission, the DCT. But like I said, you get an extra radiator and fan on the passenger side on your intake. And lastly is brake cooling. On Z51 cars, it comes with little scoops underneath the car that kind of hang down a little bit. Uh, a lot of people fight the dealerships. A lot of dealerships won't install them because they hang so low. Maybe about right here. If it was on the car, I don't have them equipped, obviously. Uh, but no, all four corners get that to help you with brake fade and cooling. Um, but it's recommended you only install it for track days because it does hang down and you will snag it on stuff. And this already has a really low car to begin with. But you can retrofit these on the on the base car like this if you want to get them. GM sells a kit for $400 and you can put the brake cooling on all four corners if you wanted to. So kind of like me, I'm, it'll be a hybrid when I'm done. I'll have some of the C51 stuff, some of the base stuff. If I ever want to track it, I would just get the, uh, the little air scoops for all four corners. And actually you can plumb in the radiator, radiator and fan. It's actually not that hard from what I read. You plumb it into the heat exchanger and then you, boom, you're good to go. You got more cooling for your DCT, which is pretty neat. Will I ever do that? Probably not. But if I do down the line, of course, I'll, I'll film it for you. But from what I saw, it's not a terrible job. There's a lot of plumbing. It looks intimidating, but when you really read the schematics, it's not too bad. Well, there you go. There's all the differences between the two cars. I thought it was interesting. The, the fact that the rear rotors are bigger on this car, and I thought it was, I thought it was crazy. Blows my mind, doesn't matter what trim you are. I wonder if the Z06 is the same way. I don't know. There's a reason for it. I forget why. I don't know. It was, it was interesting, but if I missed anything, if I messed anything up, please let me know. I am human, you know what I mean? But I thought that was kind of cool, kind of fascinating. So hopefully this, if you're on the fence about which one, this hopefully helps someone out there. I've driven both back to back, not crazy hard. I have a video on it a couple months ago. They feel almost identical. I really couldn't feel the difference. I think the tires was the biggest difference between the two. But yeah, both cars felt the same at normal daily driving type conditions, if that makes sense. But I'm trying to track, uh, I know on a track, a Z51 would outperform the base model. So. All right, there you go, guys. Hope you guys like that. And hopefully my next video is going to be the exhaust done. But I don't know. I'm a realist. We'll see. Frustrating. Is what it is. All right, guys. In any case, see you all next time. Till then, mark out.